don't understand it. I don't understand it. What's going on? I don't understand it. Anderson? What's the matter? He's the matter! Who? Him! The guy I saw in my weird coma-induced thing. He's real. Yeah... Okay. You're not taking me seriously, are you? No, no, I am. Fine. I'll prove it to you. Here is. Well, looks like Anderson's on a bit of a tangent at the moment. So let's distract ourselves by going back to a game that was pretty hyped in 2022 for a certain community. A game that promised to be so much more than its predecessor, but ended up falling into the same fate because of that ambition. I, of course, am talking about Hello Neighbor 2. On the 23rd of July 2020, Hello Neighbor 2 was announced, and introduced a completely new gameplay style for Hello Neighbor. I mean, there were still certain elements of the past games, like stealth and puzzles, but those were the core parts that the sequel was going to expand on. Not only were there going to be one house, but multiple locations for the player to explore. There was going to be an open world Raven Brooks, tons of new mechanics, the guest, neural network AI, the story between Act 2 and 3, what happened to Aaron, a journalist, Peterson on the run, it was all so good. Yeah, the game came out a complete disappointment. Not only was there no open world and basically no acknowledgement of Maya or Nikki, the neural network groundbreaking AI that Tiny Build promised, good or bad, never turned up. Neither did the guest, the cult that was teased so much in those apparent tie-in books, the amusement park, basically nothing that was hinted at or even promised turned up. When the game released, I personally enjoyed what we got, but I didn't find it hard to understand that fans were disappointed, if not hated the franchise after this, as it was this over-ambition and false promises that ended up leaving the first game to suffer the same fate. Not all hope was lost, however, as basically right after the game released, Tiny Build promised to make future updates that would add what was originally promised to the game, even bringing out a roadmap for what they were planning in 2023, not long after. And now, we are here, a year after the release of Hello Neighbor 2. So how about we take a look back, see what changes Eerie Guest Studios have made, and see if any of my thoughts have changed or still hold up. If you want to see a more detailed look at the history of this game, or the entire Hello Neighbor franchise as a whole, I recommend checking out my Hello Neighbor games retrospective, and my first Hello Neighbor 2 review, which will be linked in the description below. After going through this cool new 3D menu instead of a blank beta image and seeing the intro which has now been remade to have more fluid animation, visual detail, and the new guest model, more on that later, we are put into the tutorial, where the gameplay begins, and there is a lot to talk about from here. To start, the tutorial now has a new layout, and more clear hints on how to play the game, like being able to quickly select your items, instead of having to open your inventory every time, just to use one specific item. It's now used to more see what you have, instead of repetitively waiting for the animation to play, then pick out whatever item you need to use to either get a puzzle item or do a puzzle, which can get especially annoying when the AI is looking for or coming after you. Other than this new layout and tutorial hints, everything plays basically the exact same and we wake up to investigate the crime scene. Looking around Quentin's office, we can see that a lot has changed visually and mechanically. Not only has Quentin got a cool reflective mirror, he has cameras, storage holders for camera equipment, an inventory cabinet that refills and develops as you go on, the pin board originally from the beta, holders for new collectibles called tapes that you can find by parkouring on the seemingly ordinary houses of Raven Brooks, and a tape player to use them, as well as pieces of the tape player that you can find around the banner to find more secrets in the tapes when playing them. 
The only criticism I would give about these specific changes is that the pin board is nowhere near as complex or useful as it was in the beta. The only thing it really hints at is what houses you have completed, which the player can already really tell by just going through the game. If it had hints to puzzles in the house, or at least had some sort of information on the characters or location Quentin is going to, then maybe it would have some sort of use, but for now, it's basically useless. Going into the main gameplay loop of stealth and puzzles, there are now new and arguably better ways to stun or trick the AI in order to make it easier to progress through the game, but that doesn't mean the AI hasn't developed some new tricks itself. Beginning with the player's advantages, there are now many bin bags or paint cans, originally from the beta, scattered throughout the town for Quentin to set traps and hit the neighbours with. When an NPC is hit by one of these, they'll be forced to wash themselves off in the bathroom of the house before continuing to patrol the house, giving Quentin a short yet valued space of time to freely explore and solve or get an item for an important puzzle to therefore progress through the game. If Quentin is hit with a paint can, however, he can leave footprints in the house, leading the AI to notice and immediately go into hunt mode. A lot of new animations have been added for the AIs as well, types of these being threatening the player when out of reach, giving warnings for them to leave or stop staring when near the property, unique catch animations, looking and catching the player under tables instead of the standard animation from like 10 feet away, as well as a unique animation for catching Quentin in a closet, seeing his footprints, etc. These are all very cool in my opinion, as they add a lot more life to the characters for me, making them seem like actual, different inhabitants of Raven Brooks, with certain attitudes and reactions to Quentin, all angry, but with a new tint of life added to them. Some better shortcuts have now been added as well, especially in the Peterson house. There is a ladder on the side that leads to a window that is boarded up. Once the player gets to the second floor, however, they can open this window from the inside and then use it as a clever shortcut or final form of escape in a desperate situation. There are also several secret passages, such as a hole under this bed leading to the living room, very useful for unlocking the basement door, and this dressing cabinet next to some very interesting photos that leads as a quick access between the kids' and parents' bedroom, which both have important puzzles that link to each other. There are also some new shortcuts outside, like a house on sale having multiple ladders which lead to the museum, by far the most visited area on an average playthrough. There are now cameras around specific properties of Ravenbrooks, most being useful for keeping surveillance of whoever is looking for you, adding a lot more value to the camera viewer as a whole. Some AIs take more hostile approaches, such as the taxidermist and Mr. Peterson putting down bear traps around their given property in an effort to thwart Quentin's goal of finding their secrets. To finish off the gameplay section, other than added little details like the danger indicator actually looking like a danger indicator, more bouncy objects, a secret puzzle area with a strange golden apple coin, improved or new animations for cutscenes, mechanics, etc., the AI overall still holds up and has gotten a lot better in my opinion. From what I've tested out in comparison to the original launch of Hello Neighbor 2, the AI hears nearly every major noise you make now, even being indicated by a little spike of music. Notifying the player to hide or run quickly to safety. The pausing problem from the beta and release has been iffy throughout patches, but seems to nearly be completely gone now as well. It's nice to see the AI getting better and trickier to beat for our updates. It really reinforces that stealth-like gameplay that, in my opinion, makes Hello Neighbor, Hello Neighbor. Moving on to the visuals, man I forgot how beautiful Raven Brooks looked and it's only gotten better from there. More details have now been added to the environment, such as actual buildings in the distance instead of just a blank PNG to represent the city, that even has lights on when it's dark. It can look awkward in some areas, but mostly looks really lively. There's also fireflies around bushes and in the air when it's dark, added grass and moss around areas like the museum and taxidermist's house, a whole new park area near the mayor's that hides a sewer underneath, 
added details like better lighting, curtains and unique pictures, as well as gnomes that hide as cameras around Peterson's house. Quentin's office has doors and ceiling fans, a sign accurate to Wayron Crew's Nebar, with the design from Alpha 2. Where's this been all my life? The clouds look really odd though. That's sort of the only meh part to be honest. The intro wasn't the only cutscene to get updated. There was also a ton of better and more detailed additions in many cutscenes, such as a better looking flashlight model in Quentin's first nightmare, boxes covering Aaron in the attic cutscene, new animations in Nightmare 2, as well as individual cutscene transitions when finding the different keys for the museum, which all again add to the liveliness and fun of Hello Neighbor 2 in my opinion. There is also added ray tracing now that makes the game look even better than it already is, but I'm pretty sure it's not and unfortunately won't be on consoles, but still looks cool nonetheless. Guest, 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 guest. <laughs> Oh, how nice it is to not have a stupid cliffhanger ending. Now we're going to get a story continuation. The guest, forest protectors, a new location, a bigger map. It's going to be so cool. was a side quest? Seriously? But what about the layout cutscene? The Crowman shelter? The catacombs? It was all a clear story continuation! Come on! Well, we all knew it was gonna end up here, didn't we? The infamous Patch 9, or as it is known now, the Halloween slash December update for Hello Neighbor 2, because console players suck. The main goal for this update was seemingly to add the guest, a story continuation, and several new areas for Quentin to explore. Or so we thought. There is the guest and a fairly open new area with many secrets and puzzles, but the continuation of the story is nowhere to be seen, which is confusing since it was basically confirmed with this old draft cutscene uploaded by Tinyville a few months before release, which included Quentin being dragged away into the sewers, presumably after being knocked out getting tied to a chair, and for some reason being freed by the guest soon after. It all seemed to be after the stupid cliffhanger ending that I hate so much. Get away from me, you piece of shit! Either way, let's have a look at the stuff that was added, and see if the long-awaited Patch 9 was really worth it. Once crossing the now opened bridge from the very start or very end of the game, Quentin can make his way through the tunnel and into the forest, beginning the side quest. In Patch 9, there are two main locations, the Sawmill and the Church, which are key to beating the quest. Beginning with the Sawmill, the area contains a crane and a shredder for wood, which is vital to the new mechanic introduced in this area, wood building. From the start of Patch 9, you will find a hammer and some wood planks in an old shack. You can use these to board up doors in order to keep the guests from getting to you, and will have to use them later to reach the top of the church to progress. The sawmill is used as an area to get wood planks when you need them. You will have to release logs of wood onto the ground to then manually operate a crane to pick those individual wood logs up and place them onto a conveyor belt to be shredded into planks to then make a quick escape in a minecart to then get to the church. All while avoiding the guest and individually powering the machines using a fuse in the old shack. Now this may seem overwhelming and it is intense, but in the good way for me. There are ways to hide from the guests, however. There are a lot of bushes around the area that Quentin can hide in and usually remain unseen. The guest does seem to take some notes from his original debut in Hello Guest as well, tending to hide to pounce on you and running away when looking at him. Once you get to the church, however, the guest doesn't tend to enter or even look for you after that, basically taking away the entire threat. In the church, you will have to use the planks you got from the sawmill, as well as some boxes around the church to build yourself up to the top, ring the bell, and open up a passage by having the bell fall through the floorboards. Random, I know. You can easily run out of boards in this section, forcing you to go back to the sawmill and repeat the intense process while avoiding the guest, 
which can seem repetitive, but keeps the player on their toes, and makes the guest feel more like an actual threat to avoid. Or you can just reload the last save, which respawns all the boards and keeps the ones you placed just before, which makes it easier, I guess. Either way, Quentin gets to the catacombs, goes through a puzzle, and finds himself in a strange room when this happens. Then he wakes up in the banner. Ending the side quest and patch 9. <laughs> so that was patch 9. It was good? I mean, I liked what we got once again. The forest area was a nice change of scenery, and in my opinion, avoiding the guest felt intense, and like I actually had to stealth around. It was really fun. But this ending? Seriously? I mean, I wasn't expecting a massive revelation from a side quest or anything, but this? This just feels like the cliffhanger ending again. Like the developers had no idea what to do. So mannequin versions of Diana Maya hug us, and then we pass out. Like 80% of the main story. I'm done. That's it. I'm done. I'm not going to even bother explaining this one. Because when I see this, the line has not only been crossed, it has burnt and died. So that is every major thing released for Hello Neighbor 2 this year. Only a tiny fraction of the 2023 roadmap is added. And what do I think? Well, it's a step in the right direction. Patch 9 gave me a feeling in the Hello Neighbor franchise I hadn't felt for a long time. Excitement and anticipation in waiting for it with the community. And enjoying the release and finally playing it later on. It was good, but it's not enough to justify Hello Neighbor 2's disappointment yet. Tiny builds still have a long way to go to give us what was promised all that time ago, and judging from past teasers that have shown things that haven't appeared in the game, at least yet, it may not be as long as we think until the next big content update. Story expansion, maybe? Please? Come on, Anderson, let's take a break from this nonsense. But you don't get it. He's real. He looked like you. He... He, he looked like me. He put his hand on my shoulder and he told me very cryptic things. He said he would find us eventually, help us solve this mess. Oh, wh wh what mess? Oh God, I can't remember. 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 I can't remember.